Hi everyone, this is Justin here again. This is a quick video I wanted to show you how I'm using the RavenDB debug console in my every day to day work when I'm doing some .NET solution with RavenDB. The reason why I really want to show you this is because I'm using it in RAM, which uh, really helps speed up my uh, development process. I've also got one or two other little tricks I'll show you towards the end. Anyway, let's get started here. So the first thing I generally do is, this is just how I'm doing it, but I actually download the latest version of the build. I'm not using NuGet, I'm going to just download the full stable here. Right now the full stable is 888, so I'll download that, and there we have there. Alright, cool. I'll unzip it, there it is there. Now, what I do is I copy it to my projects folder, this is all my projects right now. Uh, you can copy it anywhere, no one really cares, just don't put it into the recycling bin because that won't help you. Okay. So I create a folder called RavenDB, and then I put the actual version there, so I could have all future side by side versions side by side later on. The first thing I do is I go in here to the server, and I just edit the config file with one entry. I change that to all, so I can do you know access everything. This is my development version. Remember, it's not a production one. Great, cool. I don't care about that. This would be if I'm hitting the file system, but remember I said I'm going to use it in RAM, so I'm not. And when I mean in RAM, I'm not talking about embedded. That's totally different. Alright, so let's have a look here. So I've got this here. Now, how do I get it into RAM? Well, what I do is I create a shortcut to that here. This shortcut can also go anywhere. I also pin it to my uh, taskbar down the bottom. Raven DB, and then I give it what version I'm pointing to, and then I give a quick note to say that I'm using it in RAM. Alright, now right now, if I run it, it won't be in RAM. It'll be using the file system in that data folder. So if I right click and go to properties, and see that highlighted blue in the target? This is where the magic happens. Add that hyphen RAM or minus RAM, hit OK, and now let's run it and see what it says in the top corner, top left corner. Cool. So right now it says the data directory is in RAM. I'm not hitting the file system, I'm not hitting the hard disk. That's good. Now, let's not assume that, you know, RAM versus SSDs and all that. But anyway, put that aside, this should be a really fast way of accessing it. Take note, if you've only got one gig of RAM, don't fill it up too quickly. Um, this is going to be a development machine, so I'm not going to have lots and lots and lots of data in there, you know, hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of rows, but that's not going to take up gigs and gigs of RAM. So this will work great for me. So the things that I do now, once I've got this up and running, is um, I use the CLS, the reset, and the queue a lot. Clear screen and CLS, reset, totally nukes whatever's in memory right now in this database. Uh, GC, that's pro, don't worry about that, and Q is quit. Because this is in RAM, we're never persisting this. Once this window disappears, that's gone for good. So you can hit Q, which is good practice I do, or you can even hit the X. Anyway, so to prove that this is working, if I go here and go to Studio Manager, this is proving that it's actually connected to it and there's no data. Let's have a look. Bang, there it is there. Great. But CLS, clear screen. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I actually use this in my day-to-day -day work. So here is Raven Overflow, an um, open source uh, app I've got on GitHub. You guys can check it out if you want. And I'll just run this. Now, actually, what's important here is I'll just run that. Yep, that's cool because I'm doing it not in debug. Is what I do is if I run this right now, generally there'll be no data, right? Well, just a little quick note here. In my app start, I just say seed. And the smarts inside that say if there's no data in the database, create some fake data. Some people do it in the app start, like I am doing it here. Some people also do it on the request start. Other people just have a normal route at the top of their, uh, they have a controller with a route that handles that so they can create and, and uh, clean when they want. I don't clean, I do it in here, which I'll show you in a sec. So let's go and open up this website. We'll have a look what happens. So bang, here we go. Fake data is getting created. Awesome. And it tells you what's going on actually behind the scenes. And for me, that's very, very important. Okay, let's have a look here. Ask a question. So what's the last thing it says here? Request 44. Okay, let's ask a question. And it told me what was happening. Request 45, 46, 46. So this, we can see what's really going on here. This is really, really helpful, especially if you want to see how many requests are happening, such as what's happening, you know, if you're batching stuff up in that. Now, what good is having this though, um, day to day? Well, right now, I might just want to say clear screen to see what happens if I go and ask a question. Nothing's happened. Ask another question. Alright, so cool. I've now seen that, so that was sort of my last 
sort of uh, session no, request that I did, my post, clear screen. Let's say, for example, now that I've got this crap data in here and it's messing things up. Well, I want to start again. Reset. Bang. Data's empty. Bang. See? It's tried to find it and there's no question, there's no index there now. So, what I might do is, I might kill my process. Start it again. Thank you, sir. Here we go. And off we go. Reset. And because I had to kill mine because I said um, my seeding is only happening on App Start, so that's why I killed it. But some people do it on request, and some people just have it up here, you know, seed or whatever the hell they want. So that's what I do, and I use I use the reset a lot. I use that all the time because I'm constantly putting in fake data. All right, I've done that. Nuke done. Or I might realize that my fixed data here, which is at the top, I might add, I want to do a, let's say for example, I want to see what happens, let's see how it's really long here, let's see what happens if I put a thousand words in there, will this just totally screw up the UI? So then I'll go into the code, I'll go here, then a fake data, fake questions, where's a fake question, here's a question here, so I'll, you know, I'll do all this crap, let's have a look here, like that, well, like that, okay. Reset, kill my process. Oh, sorry, kill my process. Start it up. Let's see what happens. Shush you and restart. There's all the fake data getting back in, and let's have a look what happens there. Cool. And now I can work with trying to fix up this. Yeah, I know you can do inspect element and just hard code a bit. You know what I'm getting at. And this is why it's really important. I'm finding that, you know, I'm using reset. I can type right and clear. And it really speeds up my development. Thanks, guys. Kick some butt out there. Later. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I've got one more thing I wanted to explain that I nearly forgot. And that is, why did I download RavenDB instead of using NuGet? See how I've got it in here? I could have just NuGetted it in all these things here. If I look at NuGet right now, that's the main one there. And that's got the server and the client in there. The download or the payload size is around 40 meg for that. While here, the client, that's around about 11, 12 meg. So, oh, and of course, the current stable which you download, which has everything in it, that's about 100 meg. So if I go back and have a look here, that's 100 meg once off download instead of 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. So I just don't want to have to download so much all the time. Yeah, I know you've got new NuGet packages store, so it's only on the local machine. It's not in NuGet and all that. Um, the other thing here is I can now actually pin it to one of these, otherwise I'd have to be making shortcuts for all these versions, which is really annoying. So one shortcut that goes into here, that goes straight into here and here. Just love that. It's great. Cool. That's about it, guys. Keep using RavenDB and make the world a better place. Until next time.